Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahova, Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Today we've got six new driver models uh, that Thomas is going to test out for us, um, all falling into that kind of high MOI, uh, forgiving driver category. Not necessarily draw bias, but the six that we think will fit kind of the widest range of golfers uh, that come in for fittings here at Second Swing. Today we've got the Titleist TS2, the Ping G4 10 Plus, the Cobra Speed Zone Extreme, the Callaway Maverick, TaylorMade Sim Max and Mizuno ST200. We're really excited about all these drivers, right? Uh, they've all been high, really good performers and fitting so far in 2020. Um, what do you think we're gonna find out today? I'm gonna expect that I may be able to hit these a little bit straighter um, with having a little higher MOI that's designed on those off-center hits. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting the ball to still rel stay relatively straight and maybe not go as far offline where that lower spinning driver head may kind of dive out of, out of the way a little bit more. So I'm expecting direction to be pretty good. Um, I'm going to expect maybe a couple that might spin a little bit less or spin a little bit more than others so we'll kind of figure out which one is performing the best with regards to distance here. Um, just to give you an idea of what we're actually going to do today. So we're going to test all six models. Um, we're going to be testing at 10.5 degree driver heads. So with Mizuno, the ST200 and with uh, Titleist TS2, those two we only had kind of like a nine and a half. I would love to do nine degrees because that's kind of what I play. Yeah. But for this purpose of this test, they'll all be 10 and a half degree aloft. So okay. all 10 and a half degree aloft, all 45 inches. Now with the graphite design XC6X, just found this to be my new driver uh, driver shaft oh, really? here okay. in, uh, in 2020. So I'm excited here to play this, this golf shaft, so we might as well test with that, right? Absolutely. So, <laughs> yep, so 45 inches, all the models are gonna be in that neutral position. So there's a couple of models like the Ping G4 10 plus, make sure it's just in the back, the weight's gonna be in the back there. Um, all in a neutral setting, yep. 45 inches, and we'll kinda see how they all perform. Yep, all in standard settings, all neutral, so we're gonna see how they all compare to each other here in a head-to-head -head test. Sounds good. All right, Thomas, looks like we're starting with Titleist TS2. Yeah, we'll hit five or six with each driver. Uh, viewers, you may notice that we do have this little light down here. Um, just place this down here today because I've just noticed in testing that I've found that we maybe get a little bit better quality data to analyze the data a little bit better. So that's right. why this is just placed down Especially here. Especially with so. drivers? With drivers, yes. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, let's do that. All right, Thomas, five shots with the Titleist TS2. Uh, first of all, what did you think of the look and feel of it? Felt really solid, felt really good off the club face. Um, for me, you know, this is a 10.5 degree head. We're gonna be using 10.5 degree drivers today. Yeah. So for me, seeing a little bit more, more loft, notice the ball flew a little bit higher. Yeah. The reason why using that 10.5 is because with TS2, um, well, I normally would do nine degree driver, but they only have an eight and a half and nine and a half. And then also with the Mizuno, we only have a nine and a half degree driver. So I figured, keep it consistent all the way through. We're trying yeah. to do a head-to-head -head test with 10.5. Sure. Um, we noticed it spun a little bit more. So the spin yeah. rate was just a little bit on the higher side than I'm kind of used to. I think it was about 2,600 on average. Um, there was a couple, I think shot three went a little bit shorter, spin, spun a little yeah. bit more. But otherwise, it was nice and straight. I was able to generate my nice draw that I'm used to. It right. was one shot in there, I feel like I missed to the right and it still kind of stayed on the right edge, so. Yeah, so I mean, with the driver at 10 and a half degrees and also the fact that these are uh, maybe larger profile club heads than you usually would play with a driver, should expect higher spin, higher ball flight, that type of thing. And it looks like so far with one club that we've seen that uh, out of the TS2. Yeah, just launched a little on the higher side. Um, spin just a little bit on the higher side. You notice my height was about 120 feet. Mm -hmm. It's a little higher than I normally hit a driver. So. Yeah. Well, let's get down to club number two here, the Ping G410 Plus. Okay. Nice. All right, Thomas, Ping G410 Plus. Um, what do you think of that look at a dress? Because it's very different than the Titleist TS2. It's more 
of a matte black finish versus kind of the glossy black of the Titleist. And you also got the turbulators on there. So what do you think of that? I like the turbulators because it helps me align that cloth face up a little bit square. Mm -hmm. When I'm looking down at it, it looks like I can get that thing square at setup, know where that club face needs to be. You know, obviously black. I like the like, looks of a black club head looking down at it. Just looking at it looks really good to look down at. Um, for me, I feel like four of the five drives I hit with this one were really good. Yeah. I think shot three has left a little bit of club face, a little yeah. bit open. That was that one way over there. Notice what happened when that you know, flew higher, didn't spun a little bit more. Yeah. But you would notice those other four kind of hovering around pretty straight around that 300 mark. The first two swings were identical. Yeah, <laughs> we got these two right thing. here in the middle, right? Yep. Just absolutely perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so miss it versus miss it, you would notice. Um, yeah, maybe there was a little bit pretty similar in distance, maybe a couple yards further with yep. King. Yeah. We'll yeah. analyze that later. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's get to club number three now, Cobra King Speed Zone Extreme. Thomas, the Speed Zone Extreme, uh, what do you think of that? Because I thought, you know, there was kind of one that was maybe a little spinny. Uh, I think it was your third or fourth shot that was a little spinny, this one down here. Uh, yeah, that but, fourth shot was definitely a little but spinny. Looking at the rest of those, they were all a little bit further than the TS2 and the G410 Plus. They were, interesting. My club speed, the exact same with the Ping G410 Plus and the Cobra Extreme. But you'll notice I picked up a little bit of distance with a little bit less spin. Uh, minus that one that was a little bit shorter, the spin rate was probably going to be around about 21, 2200. Yeah. So that was why that was going a little bit further. Direction, I like that too. The fact that they were all kind of hovering pretty much right down the middle or just drawing a little bit for me there yeah. as well. So yeah, looking right. at it, just looks like a larger profile. Mm -hmm. Looking you know, larger profile than the actual um, Cobra King speed zone as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, which is, that's the kind of the name of the game here with this category. A uh, little bit extra, you know, weight, a little lower in the club head, uh, also a little bit back. You got that weight, as you can see on the bottom of the club head there, that weight is towards the back. Drop that center gravity in. Yep. Uh, but it was, you know, for what it's worth, the lowest uh, in terms of height of the three so far. And that's with that, that kind of that miss hit you had that was a little spinny. That actually got up to like 130 feet in the air. So. Yep. This one was kind of performing more like a low spin driver than the rest, which is interesting. Yeah, it was more or less more my optimal numbers hitting it about 100 feet in the air is how far, yeah. how, how high, 90 to 100 feet in, for driver for me is, is pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Let's move on to number four here, Callaway Maverick. Okay. Throw one miss it in there. Good miss it though. My goodness, yeah, that's a good yeah. miss. That's right down the middle. All right, Thomas. Callaway Maverick, five shots. Um, you know, you were able to turn that over a little bit more. Uh, and then you had kind of that one last miss hit that actually, I mean, this one here, just shy of 300 yards, but right down the middle, uh, just a little bit extra spin on it, and it turned out really well for a miss hit. This thing is hot. Yeah. This thing was really, really hot. Um, that last one felt like viewers might have just seen my reaction on, that vi on the video of that last swing there. You know, I didn't feel like I hit that thing as good, and it still was pretty solid. still carried 280 going 297. I felt like I really missed it that. So right. forgiving, yes. But there was a couple there that were going pretty far. I think I had one that carried 290. Mm -hmm. So really good. I didn't feel like I was swinging that yeah. much faster. I wasn't definitely trying to. My club speed was one mile an hour faster than, than the other models. Um, yeah, you were yeah. in the 110s. 110. Uh, this, this tee shot here, though, that I've got marked on the right side, carried at 289.3, and the spin stayed low, which yeah. is very, you know, you still hit it 115 feet in the air. Uh, so the, idea, the goal of all these drivers is to have that high launch, low spin combination. 
uh, which is so difficult to achieve. Yep. That drive in particular had it. You're under 2,000 spin, but you're still got that high enough launch to get it over 100 feet in the air. That's impressive. Yeah, it was really impressive. You know, that shot's going to stand out to me. I don't know if I'm going to get a carry 289 here for the others, but we'll see what happens. It happens, but I didn't feel like I was swinging any harder, and I noticed that I picked up a little bit more speed. I don't think it was intentional, but even still, you'll notice my smash factor was great. Even yeah. Just going a little bit further. So. And uh, lastly, look and feel of the Maverick compared to the other three models so far. Well, I've been used to kind of looking down at a Callaway driver for a while. Callaway, um, I've, li I've kind of liked the look of that kind of that pear shape kind of look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's maybe just a little bit larger than my Sub Zero models that I've always liked to play. Um, but it looks really good looking down at. It. I feel like I had no issue with the face being a little open. I feel like I'm going to hit it right. I feel like. I felt comfortable that it was not going to shoot to the right for me. Yep. So. Well, let's get to number five, TaylorMade Sim Max. Okay. All right, Thomas, TaylorMade Sim Max. I mean, looking at the circle here, probably the smallest circle so far. Yep, was uh, the most consistent with regards to dispersion, so that, I like yeah. that. Yeah, now you had a little bit of a fade, which isn't a bad thing, and it was consistent, like you said. So that's, uh, it's different than the other ones in that sense, but it, the performance is still really solid in that you know what you're getting every time. Yeah, because I was hitting a little bit more of a fade with this one, it was just spinning a little bit more. It was like 2,700 RPMs. Mm -hmm. And it was flying a little bit higher. It was 118 feet in the air uh, on average. I think that might have been the highest one on, on average there, too. So Yeah, it's really close. That and TS2 yep. are both at 118, 118 for the average height. Yep. Yeah, and that's without even taking out any misses with any of these clubs here, too. So yeah. we'll kind of dive in, dive in at the end and maybe do our best four or five and kind of see how they all kind of compare there. Um, but it, an address felt really good. I was pretty happy with the bull flight every single time. And the fact that it was fading a little bit for me was interesting that I mm -hmm. couldn't quite turn it over as much. Uh, my club speed was 110 miles an hour, exactly, I believe, yep. um, which was just a little bit less than the Maverick and the Speed Zone Extreme. But you'd notice the bull speed was still in the 164, so my smash factor 149 to 150 with each one on there. So probably the second highest carry distance behind the Callaway Maverick right now. Yeah, yep. so, and I know you've commented a bunch already on how much you like the look of the sim drivers and I would imagine I mean that's they look really nice you got different colors it's not the black standard kind of uh, yep the status quo so to speak of drivers is that black crown Taylor made a little different here yeah it's a so definitely a pretty looking driver looking down at aesthetically you know it's a little different than all the others but it's, uh, it's definitely peeling on the eye mm -hmm. yeah absolutely well let's get into our final one here Mizuno ST200 Not quite as good. All right. All right, Mizuno ST200, Thomas. That circle is about as straight as any of them right there. That's pretty solid performance from Mizuno there. Yeah, it was, uh, I think shot four, I felt like I, I absolutely smoked. I think the, sm the smash factor, technically, if you're good at math. Um, yeah, I think we got it right here. Yeah, 165.1 divided by 109.8 be slightly higher than 1.50, 1.50 point something. Yeah. That was <laughs> so that one felt really good off the club face. Right in the center? Yeah. Uh, now looking at, looking down at it, you know, address and the feel of it, what do you think compared to the other five? Yeah, it's a really good looking golf club. It reminds me of kind of looking, it looks a little bit like kind of like the Callaway Maverick, um, looking down at it for sure. Kind of that pear shape, round, round look mm -hmm. to it. 
uh, and also kind of like the TaylorMade um, SIM, um, SIM Max driver as well. So yeah. they look pretty similar looking down it. But one constant kind of color. I know Mizuno on the passive kind of had that blue head. Yeah. Um, so I really like the look of this thing. This looks this thing looks sweet. Yeah, they've yeah. really improved. I think the appearance of the driver with Mizuno over the past few years, um, yeah. especially you know in the ST two hundred G, they got those sliding weights that are way more aesthetically pleasing now than they have been in the past. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean this is really good information here. Let's kind of get into this now a little bit further, dive into the data, and you can give the fitting insight that uh, you would give to a customer. Sounds good. This. All right, Thomas, what can you tell me about these drivers here? So, club speed with all of them was between 109.1 and 110.8. So, 1.7 mile an hour difference, 30 mm -hmm. golf swings, did pretty well. That's not um, too bad. That, that's <laughs> not too bad. Yeah, so I tried to keep it as unbiased as we could. We noticed the tightness just a little bit slower at 109.1, kind of peaked with the Kelly Maverick at 110.8. And then kind of started slowing down a little bit towards the end. And it's usually what I notice that in our fittings is 30 driver swings. Once you start getting there, you get a little fatigue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. Fatigue can definitely kind of be, <laughs> be a factor for sure. Uh, but I'm about a 110 guy. I just got what my club speed is. So ball speed should be, if I'm going to hit it really good, around about 164, 165 miles an mm -hmm. hour. Um, so touching on ball speed. So the highest ball speed goes to the Callaway Maverick, 165.1. You know, keep in mind it was also the highest club speed. So the Smash Factor 149 technically was slightly mm -hmm. under a couple of other competitors. You'll notice uh, we had four of six that had a 1.5 Smash Factor. Yep. So 149, 150. There's really nothing to kind of talk about. Tour average is 1.49. So. I was basically hitting it in the middle of the club face with them all. Speaking of middle of the club yes. face, so there's a reason why I had this light here today. It picks up hit location every single time. Mm. So I wanted just to touch on those hit locations and maybe see if that explains a, bit, a little bit why the ball maybe wasn't going quite as far with a couple of these models. So you notice the Titleist TS2 was spinning a little bit more at 2600 RPMs. But that, was, that and the Sim Max were the two highest. So if we click here and click on the hit location, this is when I was hitting the Titleist TS2. You'll notice just ever so slightly low kind of toe mm -hmm. on the face. On this screen here, if you're going to hit the ball below this line that kind of intersects halfway through that club head, the ball's going to spin a little bit more. So I wasn't quite hitting it in the middle of the face, which is why I was spinning a little bit more. Yeah, so TaylorMade also was just a little bit more towards the heel side heel will also cause the ball to spin just a little bit more there too. Um, if we look at a couple of these others, you notice the Mizuno when I was crushing it essentially at the end there, you notice ever so slightly on the toe. If you're gonna miss the middle of club face, slightly high toe is where you wanna be. That's, that's, the, that's okay. the hot spot on, on the club face. Um, Kelly Maverick, slightly high, basically kind of center right there. Mm -hmm. Makes sense why the spin rate was also just a tad on the lower side at 2000 RPMs there. Speed zone extreme, once again, that's where you want to miss it if you're going to miss the middle of the club face. Um, Ping G410 Plus was kind of all, or in that same area there as well. So just wanted to touch on hit location, just mm -hmm. to explain how that affects spin and ball speed a little bit there too. You don't ever want to be in this area here on the heel. Heel is always going to cause that ball to spin a lot more yeah. and not go as far. You'll mm -hmm. lose a lot of, uh, a lot of Ball speed, essentially. Yeah. So, just a little fitting insight okay. on hit location. I think it's kind of fun that we could bring that up there today and kind of show where I was hitting it on the club face. There was a couple here with Mizuno, Callaway, and Culber that were really, really good. Um, now, I had a driver that was 45 inches. It was the exact same golf shaft in each of these models. So, we know 45 inches is good for me because it gets me away from the heel. Yep. If I had something that was longer, and you know, it may bring me a little bit more towards the heel side. Sure. And a lot of tour players actually play a shorter driver shaft for that exact reason. Okay. So that's just yeah, just kind of a little bit of insight on hit location. Um, now, touching back to the numbers, kind of got a little bit off track there. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Um, carry distance. So the Callaway Maverick, two eighty six point three. Now that's pretty good. I'm I always kind of talking about carry distance with, with yeah. my drivers there. So that was really, really solid. So I did like that the carry was great. 
yeah. and the spin was the spin. you know essentially that high launch low spin mm -hmm. is what i got out of that yeah we were really impressed it. with that spin yeah. uh you know we had a couple of shots there where it really carried pretty far for you because that spin was in the you know 18 1900 range and for a driver in this category that's pretty low when you're hitting it in the center and smoking it out like that you usually see something with a lot of these other models you know 20 500 ish yep. is kind of when you hit it solid and that was in the low 2000s perhaps lower than 2000 which is why some of those carried a little bit farther there for maverick yeah so this is total distance you know it was kind of going the furthest overall so it's just a carry distance you notice it was kind of consistently also carrying just a little bit further there as so, well so carry distance is always yeah. important to kind of pay attention to as well and part of that is because that club face was turned over a little bit more too with the maverick uh, able to draw it a little bit more yeah, too, which draw helped. A little bit less spin yeah. is part of the reason there too. Um, it was just great. It was again great, great numbers with it. You know, uh, other clubs that were getting pretty good carry distances were with the TaylorMade Sim Max. You know, you notice it had a little bit more spin. Yeah, it was going a little short of total distance. We switched to carry distance. You would notice it was kind of up there as well, mm -hmm. just because it had a little more curve over to the to the right with that. That's why it didn't roll out quite as far. Uh, I always touch on Minnesota for essentially carry distance being important. Now, yeah. We're going to be out on the course hopefully here in the next couple of weeks. Um, I know the ball's not going to roll out 20 or 30 yards. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> Still a little soggy. Yeah. A little bit, a little <laughs> bit soggy there for, for a while there too. Um, the Zeno ST200 281 carry as well. That was really, really good. And Ping G410 Plus was right at 280. So really good. I mean, all of them, kind of, we're talking plus or minus a couple yeah. yards here. but. Kelly Maverick was kind of carrying and going the furthest on average. It was 312 yards, which was six yards further, five or six yards further than the um, next competitor. Yeah. I was really impressed. Look at this, looking at the dispersion circles here. Mizuno's is kind of, I would say, most in the center. That one and probably Ping are the two in the center uh, where you had, you know, maybe a couple to the left of center, maybe a couple to the right of center. Uh, but overall, you're hitting that one the straightest, right? So I think Mizuto and Ping were, in terms of dispersion, maybe the winners there. And both were pretty consistent in terms of distance too. Yeah, Mizuno, those last five that I kind of made, you'll notice I took out one outlier per club here, but even with that outlier in there, you'll notice that circle was still yeah. pretty small. Um, so that was really pretty good, pretty good numbers there overall there with, with that club. I love how straight it was flying. Um, we want to take a look at curve. We break that down six feet of curve to the right now that was that and the ping had the least amount of curve on average you will notice that the ping had one more a little bit more for the left and a little bit to the yeah. right so that's why i was showing the average and you know consistency a little bit higher so plus or minus 23 feet um where the mizuno was six plus or minus 18. Mm -hmm. so really really good there um the sim was sim was consistently just fading a little bit so 32 feet of curve to the right Callaway Maverick, you'll notice the highest amount of curve to the left. So that one I was able to draw, which I do like there. Um, Titleist was also the same. So Titleist was also on that left side as well, just maybe not going quite as far. So I wasn't quite catching it quite as yeah. solid. But yeah, so all pretty, pretty good numbers were associated there. Um, there's a reason why I do not play a 10.5 degree driver. A lot of you know, people like to talk about how you, if you get more laughing you can get that carry distance up. Spin might go up a little bit. So mm -hmm. you'll notice my spin rates have kind of ranged from, yeah, you know, there was a couple that were really, really good, around 2,100. But there was a couple here that were spinning at 2,600, uh, 2,600 here too with, with that one. And then the, my miss hits. So the miss hits were 3,000 RPMs, yeah. kind of plus there too. So yes, my good shots look good, but the miss hits, that was spinning about 3,000 RPMs. Right and the height, so you would notice how high I was hitting the ball. With a driver, I don't like to hit it crazy, crazy high. Yeah, I want to carry the ball a little further. I know that kind of goes against each other <laughs> a little bit. I'm a perfectionist here, guys. Yes. <laughs> um, but a lot of it comes down to my attack angle. So my attack angle, you would notice, I hit up on it between two and a half degrees and 4.2 degrees. Yeah. So when I essentially add that loft to that attack angle, um, now we're launching it a little bit above that optimal yeah. 10 to 15 at the top end of the optimal, I should say. So. And one thing, too, we should mention is that you, I mean, while you hit the center of the face on nearly every one of these shots, there were a couple that you missed. I know the one specifically that I remember was with the Callaway, where you kind of 
let go of the club a little bit on the finish there, but it still turned out really well. Like these clubs yeah. performed really well for you on those few miss hits too. So uh, that's one thing to note uh, is that you know you had some. Uh, you know, not always directly in the center. We saw that by the hit location, but the performance, the flight, and the fact that they weren't drifting way right or way left when you would miss the center, um, I think speaks to each of these manufacturers, the way that they develop their driver production, and uh, they're building the clubs now in a way that off-center hits are much more forgiving than in the past. Yeah, so a combination of a little bit more loft and a little more forgiving club head, I really didn't hit it that far off line. Even mm -hmm. those miss hits were still pretty, pretty yeah. good. It wasn't way, way over in the bunker, over to the right, right. or way, way up, you know, notice, yes, this range is relatively wide, but I was hitting it, I was hitting it over 300 yards and still with a pretty good consistent yeah. dispersion pattern there too. So forgiveness, yes, I talk about that all the time. This game is hard enough as it is. Yeah. You know, having a little more forgiveness is not a bad option. Well, Thomas, uh, thank you for joining us today. That was a lot of golf shots you hit. Uh, we have six terrific driver's models here. Um, all kind of in that game improvement, high MOI category. Not necessarily a draw bias, but again, um, surely to fit into a wide range of golfers. And um, if you're looking for a new driver, I'd suggest stopping into a second swing store or speaking on the phone with our online fitting and support team. They'll be able to get you fit into one of these brand new driver models that surely will help you uh, hit longer and straighter tee shots in 2020 and beyond. So Thomas, thank you for again, joining us today, giving us the information and the insight. You're welcome.